Paul, meanwhile, travelled back to the city of Hull. A seafaring port for centuries, the city has offered a vital link between continental Europe and the rest of the world. That link became ever more vital in the late 19th century when thousands of Jews were desperate to flee persecution from Tsarist Russia. With a bleak future in their homeland, they were eager to escape persecution and poverty. Hull became a gateway port to enable the very much desired freedom of a new life in the booming cities of the West. Paul's meeting with Dr. Nicholas Evans from the University of Hull to find out just how crucial the city's port was to thousands of Jews. Back in 1880 or 1900, is this water full of vessels with migrants? This really is the Ellis Island of Britain, the entry point on which uh, many people would then have a subsequent rail journey to Leeds, to Manchester, or further afield to the great cities of America, New York, Chicago, Boston, those great industrial cities where Jews could have a new life in this safety of America. As Russia expanded in the 18th century, she acquired the largest population of Jews in Europe. The restrictions then imposed caused great poverty and overcrowding. From 1881 to 1914, an estimated half a million Jews came through Hull en route to America. We just can't imagine the conditions, the experiences these individuals went through in order to flee oppression and in order to provide a safe place where all they wanted to do was earn a wage to be able to worship freely and to be able to enjoy life and get a basic education, the basic things in life. Yeah, yeah many of them were really in a, a terrible condition. They'd eaten very little food, many had been ill, and so therefore the assistance they received here was important. From the state, they received medical offers of, of health assistance so if you were ill you were taken to a nearby isolation or hospital if you were in need of food there was kosher food provided nearby at a nearby lodging house and that surprises me and moves me because you think Victorian times harder times than today but you're telling me the state as well as the local population and various local communities step up to welcome and support these the migrants. The community and the indigenous populations, they certainly didn't want um, more people arriving, but if they did stay here, they would welcome them. And the key here for the Jewish community was to ensure they were not an economic burden, these migrants. So therefore, the poor house was not being overwhelmed. With the mass exodus of migrants, plans were put in place to allow for onward rail travel. So, Nick, how did the railways handle these increased numbers of people coming through? We can see it precisely here. You have the main railway station to our left, and on the right, we have a separate emigrant waiting room. Along here, we've got one of the longest railway platforms in Britain, a separate uh, facility purely for the migrants. And, and tracks either side. Yeah, and you can see just how long this, this facility is. Some days when it was very busy, you'd have very long trains on both sides of the platform. And they were taking people on the non-stop train journey over to Liverpool, to the new opportunities in the new world. The city of Hull proved to be a gateway to a new life for the impoverished and helped contribute to the improvement of millions of lives from 1851 to 1914, half a million of which were Jewish.